Okay, um, hello everyone, and welcome to our uh, first lab. So uh, this is a pretty simple lab, and we just want to explore and also get familiar with the AWS console. And as you can see, we are using AWS Educator uh, to get familiar with AWS console. So uh, uh, through AWS Educator, we can use those uh, three credits uh, the console are much similar, well, with some limitations, and we will see that uh, later in the lab. So first, let's go to AWS Educate, and we all have the accounts. So let's sign in with our Educate account. Uh, so I'm going to sign in with my uh, G my student account, and once we signed in, uh, let's go to the classroom. Uh, so classroom is where uh, your professors uh, provided those virtual labs where you have those um, credits. And you can see here, this is our classroom. And we have 100 credits assigned to this classroom. Uh, so we can use those 100 credits for this class. So let's go to classroom. And let's say continue. And this is a page of the classroom. So this is where you can see your uh, remaining credits. And if you click this detail button and you will see your AWS account um, secrets and tokens, etc. So do not share those information with others. So that's why I'm not going to click this button. And this is where it will lead us to the console. So let's click that one. And on this AWS console, so this is exactly the same interface when on the two or if to the normal console. Uh, however, there are several limitations. So first, let's go to the right up corner, and here you can see I'm using Chrome. You can see here there are multiple regions, as we mentioned during the lectures. So those are the global infrastructures on AWS. Uh, you can, of course, switch to different regions if you have a normal account. So for example, if I have a normal account, um, I can switch to the other regions. OK, looks like I can also switch with Ohio region. Let's see. Right, that is what I thought. So yes, you can switch to other regions but you cannot use the resources in other regions. So as AWS Educate account, at least for this class, I think we can only use Northern Virginia region. Okay, so if we switch, switch to other regions, we will not be able to use the resources. So for example, now if I switch back to Northern Virginia region for the same type of service, EC2 instance, you can see there, is no error. Okay, so we can switch to regions, but you cannot use the resources in other regions. All right, so now let's look at some uh, re uh, services. So first, let's look at uh, the VPC service, so virtual private cloud. So you can see you have the mostly recently visited services, and you can find out all the services here. And they have about 200 featured services on AWS. So it may be hard to find out the service that you're looking for. So normally, I would just type the search and VPC. OK, and now you can see the, uh, the first one will be the one that we're looking for. So let's click the VPC. And now we are on the page of VPCs. Um, dashboard, and you can see here by default we have one VPC. Okay, so all the resources that you create, you're going to create with this educated account by default will go to this default VPC. Okay, so we already have an VPC, and that is a default one. Okay, uh, so uh, so that is where you can find out a VPC, and we will talk about VPC in our uh, third lecture. 
next service is called EC2 instance. So EC2 is uh, the virtual machine or virtual servers that on AWS. BPC is for the to design the network connections of your resources. EC2 is where you can build up your virtual computers or virtual machines. And you can see by default, we have zero uh, EC2s, but we do have a security groups, uh, which is more like a firewall of your virtual machines. So we have zero instances. And if you click the instance, you can see here you can launch instances. Okay, so we're going to try EC2 instance in the next week. So we are not going to do that. So right now we are just trying to uh, get familiar with the console. You can also uh, favorite different um, feature, like if I want to make EC2 and VPC as my favorite, so I can do that. If I want uncheck, uh, make this one and not favorite, so I just click that. Okay. Uh, so next, let's look at S3. So S3. So S3 is the online storage. Uh, AWS also claims that it is an online data lake a solution. You can see right now, uh, again, it is pretty empty, so we don't have any buckets. So that are the folders. You can see that those as folders to organize our data. But the one thing that I want to point out is the region. Okay, so S3 is different from the other services. So other services, they may require that you should specify the region. S3 does not because S3 is available globally. Okay, so you don't need to specify the region for the S3 bucket. Okay, the next uh, service that we will use, uh, normally we will use a lot is IAM, or well, that is a management access for AWS resources. So let's go that. So that is identity and access management uh, uh, service. And here, I think uh, you will see two warnings, okay? Uh, the one that you can see here is that you don't need have, you don't have the permission required to perform some operations. This is because we are using an educate account. Okay, we are using the educate account so that we cannot change something that for identity and access management. Okay, and the second warning, or that is a security recommendation, is that we should enable the multi-factor authentication, or MFA. Okay, the reason is because now we logged in uh, through the console with our educate account, which is also a root account. So root account is more like the admin account that has all the privileges that on AWS console. So that is has a top uh, privileges. And so that means that for root account, it is a best practice that enable FMA. Well, however, again, we are using the educated account. So that uh, that's why we also saw the, see those errors. Okay, so again, we saw we see two warnings. One is that we need to add MFA because now we log as a root account. The second warning is that we don't have permission to do some other operations for on this IAM service on this IAM dashboard. That is because we are using educated account not a real AWS account. All right, next I want to show the billing. So that is where you can check your bills and also credits. Uh, 
you can access your building dashboard here, or you can just type build. Okay, and that also bring you to the building um, dashboard. Again, here you can see an error because we'll need permission error. That is because, again, we're using educator account, so we are not really being charged by using this service. So that's why we have those errors. So you cannot see your bills, uh, payments, credits. Okay, so that's why we have those errors. Um, if you are using a paid account, or the normal account, and you will be able to see your bills, payments, credits, etc. Okay, so that's a difference. That's a one of difference by using an educator account and a real AWS account. Okay, let's also look at the other services like RDS. So that is for the database, uh, especially for the relational database. So it provides the cloud-based relational database services. You can see you can create a database. We can see right now we don't have any instances. Okay, and if you uh, you can create databases. Um, here you can see if you have some databases, so it will be showing up here. So we'll check. We will use this one later this semester. All right, and now I'm going to show you something that is very uh, interesting. So some AI services. The first one is called recognition. Okay, Amazon recognition. So I just have IEQ and it, it's showing, showing up here. And recognition is an AR service that allow us to analyze images or videos, okay? And you can access this service by using the console, or you can use their SDKs, software developed kits. So this support most of the popular most of the popular languages like uh, Python, Java, C sharp, etc. Uh, so let's try a very quick demo. So let's see, try the demo here. So now you can see here those are the images. And they are able to identify the objects like car and also confidence. And there's a person. Okay, they have very high confidence that they are doing that one correct. And we can also try using a different image. Okay, so city 99.2% confidence. And we do see buildings 99.2 confidence. If you like, you can also upload some images that you like uh, of your own your own image. So for example, here I'm going to upload an image that I downloaded from GMU website. So I go to upload. And this is the image of GMU campus. And I said open. And now you can see they identified those features, grass, plant, vegetations, outdoors, etc. You can show more. And then they also recognize this campus and they are buildings. Okay, so that is also a very, uh, very nice feature. Uh, so you can use recognition by using the console or you can use SDK. So if you know some programming language. Uh, you can also try the facial recognitions. So here you can tell, okay, so this um, is a female the age range on this uh, image, and she is feeling and also happy, and does wear, a does wear glasses, okay? And you can also try the other images. Of course, you can also upload your own image if you like. You can also do facial comparisons, so say compare that whether or not they are same person, and you can see they, for this, Comparison, they are the same person. Okay, the similarity is very, very high. Uh, we can also identify the text in an image. So here, let's use our image again. Again, you can use any images that you like. Let's say upload. 
Okay, and you can say they are they have identified those those two words so about GMU. Okay, so that is for the recognition. Uh, let's also try another service that is called Translate. Sorry, uh, AWS Amazon Translate. So that is also another AI service. Of course, you can use this um, via the console, or you can use SDKs uh, so that you can use Python on some other languages. So let's say we want to transfer uh, English uh, to Chinese. So English to Chinese. If you speak any other type of languages, languages please feel free to do that so here let's say hello okay and uh, you can see that it is translated in chinese okay uh, because i also speak chinese so i can type chinese here and uh, let's translate that one into english Hello everyone. Okay, this is good. This is bad. Okay, so that is translate. Again, feel free to use those services. Uh, the last one that I'm going to give you a demo is called Cloud9. I mentioned that Cloud9 is like um, a service as a platform. Okay, EC2 is like an infrastructure as service and Cloud9 is platform as service. And translate something like this one is uh, like this one would, would be I would call it software as service so that you can use those service direct directly. Okay, so lastly, let's see Cloud9. Let me switch to English. So Cloud9 is a cloud editor to write. Uh, any code like if you if you want to learn Python, Java, C, C Sharp, uh, etc., and you can use Cloud9. And um, I think I did mention in the lab that do not create any services. Okay, so on your side, please do not create anyone because that will create your that will use your credits. But here as a demo. I do want to create an environment so that you can see how the Cloud9 look like. So here I say I want to create an environment. This is a demo. And you can choose the instance type and I'm just going to use the, the default one. Okay, you can see it's pretty simple and create the environment. So environment is an editing environment that you can use uh, to edit your uh, the your pro your code. So it support the the most in popular programming languages, and this may take a few uh, seconds. Okay, so now you can see it is ready. Um, uh, so this is a console where you can run some git commands like download codes from github and also upgrade upload your codes back to github uh, so here let's see we can create a new uh, file and yeah, let's call it demo.py and cloud9 is able to identify okay this is a python code so if i double click and i can run i can write type some python code let's see print um, hello world okay and now if i run it so we can see the output okay so this is a very great service so that is the um the example of the platform and service that you can develop your own applications by using this cloud service okay uh, so remember to delete uh, your service. So let's uh, go back to 
AWS Cloud9. So now you can see you have your environment. And let's make sure that one is selected. And let's delete your environment so that you will not be charged later. OK, so now this is being deleted. OK, uh, so please feel free to try the other services that uh, you're interested. Okay, so please feel free to try the other services that you are interested. So if you are interested in AR or VR, you can try this one. If you are interested in machine learning, um, and yes, here you can try the SageMaker. If you are interested in other AI services, so you can check those out. Okay. Okay, uh, so now go back to Cloud9. You can see it has been deleted. That's great. Okay, so uh, I'm going to stop my demo here. So please feel free to try other services that you are interested. And once you are done, I think you can safely close this window uh, because we are using educated account, so you don't need to worry about logout. If you are using the full privilege or the real AWS Educate account, then I would highly recommend you sign out. Okay, after you're done with the AWS console. Okay, so here let's go back to the classroom. And you can see, uh, let's refresh, see how many credits we have. St we still have, okay, so we still have 100 credits. Uh, because we didn't uh, do something that significant. Uh, so I just created a Cloud9 environment, and Cloud9 is pretty inexpensive. So uh, there's, there was not too much credits being used. Uh, number two, another big reason is that there might be a delay that you will see that credit is being changed. So if you log back to your AWS console uh, next day, and you may see that there might be a, uh, some credits that's being used because I tried Cloud9. But for other services, uh, because we just did a very simple demo, so I don't think it will cost a lot. Okay, and oh, again, you can safely close this page, and you can log out, and that's all for this lab.